Malibu Kalan to the north of Anvil Square at Fridgeburg. And since this is a contested drop, as soon as he grabs a weapon, which is an SMG, he immediately looks for an angle onto one of the players, which if he was still out in the open, would manage to pick him up a quick elim. He gets hit for a big chunk of damage and backs off into one of the other buildings where he can slowly sit and re-farm back up, whilst the other player tries to take his walls. Essentially, he's gaining materials, whilst the opponent is, at best, maintaining the same amount. And this all comes together once a third party rolls in, as he's easily able to sit at the sidelines and just pick up an easy elim. And now remembering this other player has basically no mats left. And in this fight, there's not that many nice maneuvers that he makes, but one thing that's really critical is that he goes up for those extra materials for that player that's knocked in the middle of the fight to ensure that other player does not get them. And the end result is that he wins this fight because that other player completely runs out of mats. So all of this harvesting that he did earlier on, playing defensive, playing things slow, and then grabbing these additional mats is essentially what nets him two free eliminations off the bat. But his problems don't end there because yet again, another player rolls in to join the fight. But because he doesn't have that many more materials left after these two fights, he does a good play by dipping back to the old materials that he harvested out and playing around these since he has much more space there. The opposing player realizes this is a lost cause and is not worth fighting, and so he disengages. But now the problem is, Malabuka has absolutely nothing left to his name. So naturally, he tries to sneak up onto another player to easily get these refreshed, but unfortunately it doesn't work, so he just kind of steals the shield keg and runs away. He makes a really good play with the low amount of loot he is to go and claim Anvil Square. A lot of the fighting will be over at this point, and he can just build up, reharvest his materials, and grab the loot from the capture of the POI. This also gives him tons of gold, which we'll come back to later. I'd like to analyze this fight, but he just literally pooed on this guy. But you can see after capturing the POI, looting all of the chests, pooing on this guy super quickly, he has 500 gold, so he spends almost that entire amount to go from a purple to a gold thunder pump, which I'm not gonna lie, I don't really think is that beneficial, because this gold would probably be better spent re-rolling more of his reality augments. Unfortunately though, I can't see which reality augments he's gotten outside of Aerialist and Splash Medic, because they aren't shown in replays. Speaking of Aerialist, this is pretty much how he rotates the majority of the mid game, only building up a few layers of ramps, flying, gliding, sliding, and repeating. Most people make the error of building up too high and just getting beamed, but Malibuka does this by keeping relatively low and staying within these ridges, meaning players can't see him. As soon as he starts to get beamed, notice he switches to brick, and this is because he has great awareness of what's around him, and that he's easily going to be able to reharvest this and get his brick continually up to capped, whereas there's not as much wood in the direction that he's going. Plus, if you just build on wood, people are going to spray you anyway. And similarly, as soon as he gets into the third zone, people start spraying him and he instantly switches to metal to stop them, which does ward off their aggression. However, then, as soon as he realizes they've stopped shooting, switches back to brick because yet again, he can reharvest that. So there's always a really nice amount of material efficiency here. But the one big problem is he's on the full south side of the zone. There's a huge mountain ahead of him. He's at the bottom of it and doesn't have a shockwave hammer to make that next rotate. So naturally, he starts to aggress the players that are around him and actually does manage to pick up a quick elim. Unfortunately, this player does not have a hammer, so he's still got a tough rotate ahead of him. So as the zone closes, he peeks through a cone and realizes that there's a bunch of players watching him. So he makes a very smart rotate by dipping back into zone and wrapping all of the way up and around while doing this, hiding behind trees, old builds, the slope of the hill, and throughout this entire rotation, he didn't even get spotted until he made his way into that next zone. So this small amount of scouting that he did by looking through his cone and seeing that there are players watching him basically saved him 10, 20, 30, maybe even 50 builds on this entire rotate. Since he is aerialist, naturally he builds up a little bit higher in that next zone in case he pulls a max distance fifth zone and has to fly his way there. And all of the foreshadowing pays off because of course, yes, he does pull a fifth zone that couldn't be any further away from him. After seeing that the player to the left of him hammers as the zone starts to move and that there's only one other player rotating by foot up on top of the mountain, it's clear that this is a pretty free path to take. On the way down the mountain, he does a really nice technique with the glider redeploy where he catches himself low on the ground and then hides behind some of the old builds to ensure he doesn't get a shot. He continues to slide down the mountain, but as you notice at this point, it's completely open. And as he notices that player is shooting him, this is where he should have basically started to build. However, he's a little bit too overconfident that this player will miss and has almost completely wiped out the game at this moment, meaning he has to drain tons of his heals. One of the best places you can get a refresh in any competitive game is the fifth zone. That's why Malibuka starts to get aggressive onto the players around him. However, unfortunately, he is not successful. And here's a play that I wouldn't recommend. Because he is glad to redeploy and he's already on high layers, he can just fly around and basically land straight into Grohl's box and full 50-50. He whiffs a bunch of shots and somehow manages to win this fight, basically because Grohl's chokes it. Now, I'm not trying to advocate for this play and say that it was the best play I've ever seen in my life. However, in solo 
Total Victory Cups where every win is $100, you have to make Risk Your Plays if you don't have the inventory already for it. You've got to get it from somewhere, and in this case, it was jumping straight into Grohl's box and somehow winning the fight. Since he has a Shockwave Hammer and Max Chug Splashes from this refresh, he uses one hit of that Shockwave Hammer to fire himself to the front side of the zone. Combining this with Glider Redeploy, he lands actually at the front low side, and if you've watched any of my other videos this season, you'll realize that he lands here to avoid other players Shockwave Hammering through his box and wasting his materials. Now, since he has so many materials, he can just play this very slowly. He doesn't need any refreshes, he can just use the hammer, box up, make minimal edits so that his builds are as strong as possible, and stay away from other players. Whether it's intentional or not, one of the places he always likes to box up is diagonally away from other players on the same layer from them. This allows him, if he needs to, he can go for refreshes, but most importantly, had he gone above this player, when they Shockwave Hammer to rotate, it would knock him out. Since the zones are getting a little bit smaller, he doesn't hold any directional keys while Shockwave Hammering, which allows him to fly straight up. Then he can just hold forward and he'll fly straight down into this little crevice, ensuring that he doesn't waste tons of HP and chug splashes by landing in the front of zone. Because Malabuka kept either a very high layer or always stayed on complete low ground, this meant that in this endgame he wasn't knocked out by a shockwave hammer once, meaning that when it came to the final moving zone, he had enough materials to take height. And notice since he got the chilly chug splashes from those refreshes on Grohl's earlier in the moving zones, he has that increased movement speed which allows him to go all the way into zone and connect his high ground to something significantly higher than the players down below. At this distance, no one from low ground shockwave hammering would be able to knock him out. Notice how he also stays to the full right hand side of the zone, meaning that he's not directly over any of these players and he has a right hand peak to spray down at them down below. From his early game where he's always trying to re-harvest materials, be as efficient as possible with his rotates re-harvesting brick as he goes, being ultra aggressive when he needs a refresh, or just ensuring that he's not getting chopped out by shockwave hammers, it's no surprise that come to the end of this game, he has more materials than everyone else, is on height, and manages to easily win because the players down below all died to zone on this rough rocky hill. Like and subscribe baby, peace!